Let's give a big KFOG welcome to the heavyweight champions of the world, Judah and the Lion! Aren't you guys the heavyweight champions? Come on, man. I've never had that intro before. Thank you, No Name. I didn't, I didn't know that. Are we? We are the heavyweight champions oh. of the world. That's Obviously. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Good day. Everybody seems really happy. Has everybody got some wine? Oh yeah, drink a little bit more of that. This music will sound a lot better. Uh, thanks so much, K-Pop, for having us. You've been so sweet to us. Um, no name, we did a horrible interview with him, but... Other than that, it was, it's been a really, really good. But it wasn't on him, it was on us. So <laughs> yeah, don't, we, don't receive that. We told him that we were the heavyweight champions of the world, and he believed it. Um, anyways, we're, we're super stoked to be back in the Bay Area. We love this place. We love visiting here. We're, uh, we're from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, originally not, not from Colorado over here and then uh, Chicago over here. But we met in Nashville. Chicago people. Yeah, here. Represent. Here. Where, where about? <laughs> West, West Side. West Side. Uh, so we have a new record coming out um, called Pep Talks. It comes out May 3rd. Um, and we're super, super excited about it. We have a few songs out um, now that we're kind of just now kind of starting the Pep Talks process a little bit. Um, I guess the cycle doesn't necessarily start, start until May 3rd, but um, we're getting very, very excited about it. And... Um, uh, to dive in a little bit, a lot of the content of the record has to do um, kind of just what I've gone through in the past few years, um, just like with my, my family back home. As we were kind of traveling back home in Cookville, Tennessee, where I'm from, kind of a small town in Tennessee, my um, parents were going through this pretty gnarly divorce and, uh, you know, addictions, affairs, all the, the bad stuff that kind of happen um, sometimes in a divorce. And um, it was just kind of rough to see both my parents, who I'm very close with, um, go through such a hard thing. And then, you know, I, as a kid, even as a 25-year-old, I'm sure we have a lot of people that have parents or, um, you know, or kids of divorce or whatever. I think this statistic is pretty profound. Um, but even as, like, a 25-year-old semi-mature person, it would just, like, rocked my world. Um, and so as we were kind of um, I, on the road, it was like just kind of trying to process through all that was going on and a lot of the ways that I, I and us have always kind of processed through emotions that kind of flood in is through songwriting. And so a lot of the record, the content kind of has stems from like the pain that I felt through that and almost probably the anger and the rage that I felt towards them. Um, and this song uh, kind of came, I, I remember some specific moments in the verses that, that kind of happened to me in the midst where I just felt maybe the most alone that I, I'd felt to that point in my life. And um, it came out in a very sad, happy way to this song. Um, this one's called Why Did You Run? It came out like two weeks ago. So it's still, it's still a new song. So if you haven't heard it, it's okay. This one's called Why Did You Run? <laughs> the call on the streets in Seattle said honey I don't got much time to talk I broke down cuz I knew what was next and she said I'm okay but I'm locked in a holding cell till someone gets me out can you help me I have no one else so there I was a defenseless middle kid crying out for the right words to say I'm sorry I can't do anything at all so I hung up called you I hung up and called you cause you the one you the one I needed you the one oh you the one I needed the most why, why did you run? 
took a stupid fight with him after the accident Funny now, cause I thought it was in your defense Cause I thought you were sober then So there was a lost kid looking for a home that he once knew So I broke down and called you I broke down and called you Cause you were the one time to talk broke down because I knew what was next thank you so kind of in the middle of the story um, I I don't um, I kind of wasn't talking to my parents in seasons uh, I almost got advised to stop um, talking to them because I was just trying to fix the whole situation and as most people know it's like you can't really I'm a, such a fixer, and I wanted to fix it, and I couldn't, and uh, I was advised by some counsel that I was like, just, you can't fix it, you know, you're the kid, be the kid, even though you're 25 or whatever. Um, so I kind of stepped back and, and was just angry and mad at the world and mad at my parents and mad at what was going on, and um, uh, I wasn't talking to them uh, for, for a good bit, um, but I had this moment where I was like, man, I really feel like I should answer this phone call from my mom. So I kind of reluctantly answered, and um, she just, I'm very close with my parents, and, and now really, really close as well. Um, uh, but during the season, it was just kind of a rough one. So I kind of reluctantly answered, and uh, she was, she happened to be the day that she was moving out of our childhood home that we'd grown up in, and um, she just like broke down on me. And it was just this moment of like, ah, frick, like, this is really hard on both my parents as well, which you know should be obvious, but I think in my own selfish way was kind of becoming defensive on what I was feeling. And um, anyways, when she kind of broke down like that, I was just like, oh man, this is so rough. And it kind of got me out of my own stuff and brought me into what was going on with her. And um, she she had just said this thing. She she said this thing to me that I'll never forget. She was like, "I'm just. It's so hard to process this. What's going on?" Um, and in that moment, I was just like, "It just. You could just feel it. Like the the heart the heartbreak that she was feeling." And um, like I said, like a lot of times for me, it's like when I um, use music as a kind of a platform to kind of help me process through emotions because I can be such a bottler um, of my emotions. Um, and so. Anyways, I, I wrote this song kind of from the perspective of my parents uh, during the whole thing. Um, and then we got uh, Casey Musgraves uh, to sing on this song as well. She sang the second second verse and the second chorus, and we were, like, super stoked to have her on it. It was 
I think it was like we were recording right when she got the Grammy. She found out, I think, like the day before, a few days before, at least we did. And we were like, oh my gosh, congratulations. She, she was like, well, I'm probably not going to win, but it's really far. I'm just like, she ended up winning like four Grammys after. <laughs> and so it was really lucky for us. <laughs> uh, but this one's a new one as well. It's called Pictures. Too scared to move these things from this home we made. So many good memories and some fatal mistakes. And I know that you love me still, but we're not the same. And if I'm being honest, I don't really want you this way. But you were mine Always and now you're gone Look what we've become Just another sad song Of a love gone wrong I hate that I'm taking our pictures off the wall. But I guess I'm still processing my whole world's been turned around. Every truth I knew since high school's a lie from your mouth. And we made our promises, yeah, we said our vows. But none of that really seems to matter to you now. Cause you were mine always in now you're gone look what we've become just another sad song of a love gone wrong i hate that i'm taking our pictures off the wall Oh, man, I would love it if my microphone was on. Oh, here it is. Awesome. Wow. Uh, dude, I just got to say, man, it's so refreshing to see someone so open with their emotions. Like, I can't express my trauma that way, man. Like, way to go, man. It's like getting lost. I'll just keep talking, bro. And then how did you feel? And then what happened? This should be a TV show, man. Get a Netflix show, man. It's unbelievable. And it's just, uh, you know, I think it's good. I think it's the power of music, you know. Like, uh, tough things happen in life, and then you turn into something that we can kind of all use in a weird way, right? It's the beauty of it. Yeah. Hopefully, at least. <laughs> I'm feeling it, man. I hope you guys are feeling it, too. Thank you. 
and for uh, Nate and uh, Brian, that's got to be, you know, you guys have known each other for a long time. So kind of, I would imagine, like, one person's trauma in the band is everyone's, right? Yeah, I mean, we, like, Judah's parents are kind of like family to us, too. So we've been good friends with the whole group since about seven years ago. So it's it's not just like, oh, we're super bummed for you. It's like, these are people that we love, too, that we see often. And um, yeah. it's really hard to, you know, I think, appreciate what they're going through and fight for what you need, but also love them well in the midst of that too. And it's just been an interesting thing that no one expected and, and wanted, but uh, it's been nice. Like we were hanging out with his dad on Sunday. And, Do you ever stop and just go, how did life get so complicated, right? Like, it's like, what, you know, it's like overwhelming, right? Yeah, and like a lot was going through my head a lot too. It was just like, I mean, to say it again, it's just like to go through it as a 25 year old, I, I was having like a lot of empathy because we have a lot of younger people that listen to our music as like, cannot imagine going through what I was going through as like a 12 year old or even, mm. you know, I mean, some people are born into situations that are the most difficult. And for me as a 25 year old, I have great, I have great parents. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I don't know. It just, I just had so much more empathy towards that. Those people that have to kind of go through that very, very, very young in w way more difficult of situations. <laughs> and I know that, uh, you know, I know you guys got uh, marriages and relationships of your own. How did that, how did this experience kind of change your view on your own relationships? Nate, you want to answer that one? Take a tackle that one, man. Uh, it's Brian. like, no. Oh, I'm sorry, Brian. <laughs> sorry. Um, well, I'm a newlywed. So yeah. My perspective is going to be. It's all bliss, bro. You're like, whatever. It's, it's just perfect. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, it has to be handled with care. Everything has to be handled with care and uh, grace. And I think I think we all learn that at some point in our life, whether it's through like watching somebody go through something hard or you experiencing it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Man, you guys are like, we came to see Jude in the line, not some kind of marriage counseling thing. <laughs> it's, it's taking a really weird turn. What's going on here? Brian, I love it, man. Congratulations on being a newlywed, man. It's awesome. It's awesome, man. It's fantastic. Uh, it's super exciting time for these guys, man. They got the new record, Pep Talks, coming out May 3rd. Uh, I'm excited for it. They have 17 new songs on it, which is just, that's a lot, 17. man. That's a lot of songs, man. Do you remember how to play all of them? Nope. We, we, haven't, <laughs> we haven't done them since the studio, so. Yeah. And let's talk about, I love the name Pep Talks, too, because obviously, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you've been through that you need a little bit of motivation for. So do you guys have, like, a kind of a band mantra to motivate you to, to stay focused on your goal? Is, is there a goal for Judah and the Lion? Lots of goals. <laughs> Lots of goals? Give me, give me, like, three of them, man, the top three. Well, I, I think and this is going to sound so cheesy, which I get, but um, a long time ago we were like, we needed to, like, to define, like, what success is because that, that can become so hard for a band, just, it can get so blurry. We were talking about it a little bit earlier, it's just like, uh, you know, it, it could so easy to fall into the trap of like, oh, how many Instagram followers do you have? Or like, how many people are showing to your show? Or like, you're not a big band. It's like, okay, well, whatever. Like, we're playing music, um, blah, 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 that we love. And so like, one of our mantras is just like, to love people well in the journey. Cause it gets so hard to like, I don't know, you're doing interviews and you're s meeting so many people and it's so hard. To, it's so easy to kind of check out and not really view people as people. Yeah. Because you're just like, it's, it's, there's so many people. I'm real, know? man. I'm here. I'm right here. But you don't even have a name, see? That's so right. Like, that's true. I know. That's a good point. That's a good point, Judah. Am I a real person? That's a good point. Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I think uh, another goal, it's kind of going off what he said, it's like, we, we've always strived to do cool stuff and, you know, play late night shows and play lots of venues and have people come to our, our shows. And we're always, you know, trying to push to be the best that we possibly can in that way. But um, I think the way I would word it as a goal is, like, try to be as present as possible in those moments. Amazing. So that we're not always... Because I, I think, you know, we played Letterman maybe four years ago, five years ago, and that was their first, like, maybe we're going to be able to do this. This is a big deal. We're on TV. Yeah, and it was super exciting, but the day no after... No more grilled cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! PBJs uh, out the window. Yeah, the day after was a, a hard sort of realization of like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, now what? We put so much like weight and emphasis on this day, and now yeah. it's over, so now what? You know, I, I think it was just a kind of hard reality of if we put too much stock in a thing or an experience, there's going to be a, 
let down afterwards. And so trying to appreciate and work towards those goals and be as present as possible. And um, But yeah, we had to figure out it is about people and it's about each other and walking together and appreciating those times without giving too much weight to it, I guess. I know you guys have uh, two bucket list things for any band. You guys are coming back to the Bay playing Outside Lands yeah. in Golden Gate Park. That's going to be one that you remember because you're like in the middle of a park and you have all these beautiful people sitting there. It'll be a lot of cloudy, Everybody's a lot of smoke. Everybody's going to be there. A lot of foggy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then you guys are also playing uh, Woodstock 50, yeah. which is kind of crazy, go. right? I mean, I remember like Woodstock 94. Like to me, like people are Woodstock. I'm like, oh, that mud fight was crazy. And how was that 25 years ago? Like, shouldn't we be having a 25th anniversary of that Woodstock? But uh, I mean, what does that mean to you guys? I mean, that's 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 wild, right? Like, yeah, I think specifically when we got that offer uh, from Woodstock, because it's like the 50, you know, it's 50 years or um, the year anniversary. It was just like, it it felt like we were kind of a little bit of part of like history or something. Like yeah. It felt like almost bigger than life a little bit for us to get that offer. Yeah, my grandma, I actually talked to her on the phone, and she was like, I heard you guys are playing Woodstock. <laughs> I was like, I was like uh, yeah, but, and she was like, uh, I hope it's not as crazy as it was back in the day. I was yeah. like, what are I you hope saying, you're not doing grandma? Drugs. Yeah. <laughs> was she there? So we'll did, she, did she ever go to it? Uh, I don't think so. I think maybe like her children, like my dad maybe, can see if gone. she had any tips. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Grandma, how do you survive Woodstock? Woodstock? Come with us. How do we make She's like your Woodstock crazy? guide. She's like, all right, don't eat the brown acid. Come over this way. But Dude, I think honestly, that, I, for a band to walk in with a grandma, strong vibe. That's, that's good. Absolutely, man. Just have her on stage playing the tambourine. Like, that's I was at the original one. What? Yeah. It'd be awesome. Um, I have one other question about uh, the new record. There's a, a, obviously a lot of heavy songs on it, but there's a song called Sports with a Z. <laughs> I need to know what that's all about. It's about sports. <laughs> Simple as that. So we, we have um, two j- joke songs. Two like th- so the record as a whole is kind of a it's heavier. Um, the in, like the as we move forward to the record, the, the reason why we felt like putting a record out is in this day and age, you know, it, it's so you know everybody just likes to put out singles or whatever and. We grew up loving to go buy records from our favorite bands, and uh, as I'm sure some people here did as well, and we were like, yeah, man. Um, in some sort of way, we were like, we can bring records back. It's like a lofty goal, but yeah. um, you know, when we had 17, it was like, that's a lot of songs. And, that's a double um, record, bro. Yeah, exactly. Oh, um, but we, we felt like we, needed, we didn't need to hold any of these songs back, and there's two joke songs uh, at the end that actually our friends wrote back home um, and sports is uh, the, is a part of that collection because the the album ends kind of in this theatrical, emotional way, and then it's just like sports. So just <laughs> you just be waiting for it. Sports I was looking, at the, I was looking at the tracks. And I'm like, wait a minute, man. Wait a second. Sports with a Z. Hmm. It's a little bit of our tip of the cap too, to like Blink 182. Oh, just awesome. like, hey, like, you know. Yeah. Thanks for the info. That was hella '90s, like the different spellings of the names with the letters backwards and all that stuff. But, uh, sort of coming back is kind of disturbing me, but that's okay. Uh, all right, let's hear some more music, guys. Thanks for taking the time and hanging with us. We really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. And let's enjoy some more music from Jude and the Lion. Uh, so just for K-Fog to know, we, we are all about love and about um, the good things, but we really do like for you to play our songs as well. We like paying the bills. So thanks for the support. Um, and you can do like what my mom does back home as the listeners just call no name yeah. on his cell phone or whatever and request Jude in the line. <laughs> but then you call again with a different voice <laughs> and you request more Jude in the line. Can I tell a quick little story? I just, I just thought of this. Um, I was, and especially talking about Blink-182 and all that. Uh, I was in a punk band in seventh grade. Yeah. That was my first band. Won the talent show. Uh, the band was called The Commodes. Um, but the reason I thought of this, because our first and only song is called No Name. Can you sing the chorus? I wasn't the singer. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can sing. You know I don't know the words to the song. It's just say no, it's just no name, right? The chorus? I, I don't think it like had to do with... It was like we didn't want to think of a song. Cause we, oh, got it. Title. It, it wasn't actually... Right. Fun, fun fact, if you asked me to sing all the lyrics to one of our songs, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it all the Nate way. Nate really cares about the lyrics. <laughs> 
I'm always like, come on, man, it's so emotional. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. That's why the banjo always sounds happy. He, he thinks it's a happy song. <laughs> <laughs> He's just going. That's good. That's really good. <laughs> this is uh, good. This is good. Just listen, just listen for it in this chorus. <laughs> Bounce, 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 bounce. All right, I'm I'm not gonna be able to think. There's there's moments where you don't recover. That might be a moment, just because. Uh, so another emotional song. Um, we in the middle of the season, I I was just I don't know I don't know how you are. It's like for me, it's like when one thing happens or a thought kind of rushes in, and you kind of find yourself in this like overwhelming space. It's like almost like all the thoughts and the doubts and the questions kind of sink in. And there was this moment after a show in Texas where, um, you know, some really gnarly stuff was kind of happening back home. And um, we had just played this epic show. Um, and I think it was in Dallas or something. It was an amazing show. And then, you know, get off and get a call from my sister. And another thing has happened um, with, with family stuff. And um, it was just this moment of like there was so much adrenaline and excitement that from the show, but then there was like all this like turmoil and crap going back home, uh, for lack of a better word. And I don't know, I was just like overwhelmed. I was just like, what? What? What is the point of all this? Like, I can't fix anything. I can't do anything. And um, what's the? You know, just like these thoughts uh, kind of came in, and uh, I went on the back of the bus and kind of wrote these lyrics out, and that's how this song came about. It's called Over My Head. What's my purpose, huh? What's my future? I don't know. These are the questions I address before I go to sleep. I wish my mind would turn off with the lights on my TV screen, but here in the dark, everything off. I start to think it gets hard to breathe. I, 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 I'm in over my, I'm in over my head. I'm in over my, I'm in over my head. All these thoughts are an ocean that I'm drowning in. I'm in over my, I'm in over my head. I'm in over my, I'm in over my head. I'm in over my, I'm in over my head. Second guessing, I'm so stressed, success is an empty lie. So what's the point if that's our purpose on earth by design? All this stress and got me confessing that I can't find peace. So I hydrate, caffeinate, medicate, repeat. I hydrate, caffeinate, medicate, repeat. I, 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 I'm in over my, I'm in over my head. I'm in over my, I'm in over my head. All these thoughts are an ocean that I'm drowning in. I'm in over my I'm in over my head. I'm in over my, I'm in over my head. I'm in over my, I'm in over my, I'm in over 
it's so funny. We're we're starting to play these new songs um, for the first time, and I'm I'm always like self conscious. It's like I don't want to bum people out at these <laughs> shows. <laughs> This is like the first time we, I mean, our, our older music, I don't know if you listen to it or not, it's a little bit more optimistic. And, um, but the record as a whole, you know, it's telling the story of, of hope, honestly, because I, I feel like in the midst of maybe your lowest points in life is when you find the strongest form of, like, hope or whatever you believe in. You know, you kind of find that, that thing, and I think that's what kind of makes life beautiful. Um, and so the record as a whole is actually pretty hopeful, but the, the story that we're trying to tell, the, the, the sadder songs are out, so... Just be waiting if you're an optimistic person. <laughs> we actually, it was, it was so funny. We were, we were starting to come out with um, these songs. Some of our the people that listen to our music are like, oh, who, who messed with Judah and the Lion? I'm going to kill them. Like They kind of came <laughs> to our defense. And I was like, oh, gosh, I love our uh, fan base. They're so sweet. <laughs> All right, so we're going to end this... Um, in, in, a, in a happier way, I guess. I don't know. This is kind of a happy song. Um, but we, we really do want to say what an honor it is to be back in your city, and we're so excited for um, Outside Lands Festival, and that's the first time we've, we've played it. Uh, we've been to the city, uh, the Bay Area, quite a few times, and to be supported, um, like at radio with KFOG and, and genuine people like, like that are here, it just it means a lot. So thanks for being a part of the story here as well, and hopefully see you down the road. So this is the song we wrote after that David Letterman um, kind of almost epiphany of just like we needed to find success for us and not um, not allow anybody, any other band or any other person really in the world to define it. And I would encourage you, no matter how young or old or whatever, it's like if you haven't defined success for your life, make sure you do because other people will define it and it will not be great for you. At least that's my experience for it. Um, so, everybody have a good, it's kind of the weekend. We're drinking wine. <laughs> it's like we're almost here. So, everybody have a good weekend, and we'll see you guys soon. Hey, my life is real great. Feel I'm well on my way to my dreams coming true, and I'm getting to do it with you. And it feels so nice when the people sing along, They're singing along with a banjo. cars and fancy clothes and a wife with a big old diamond ring. Cause the people they're dancing along, they're dancing along to the mandolin and some sort of hip hop beat.
Life is real great, feel I'm well on my way to my dreams coming true, and I'm getting to do it with all of you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, one more time, Judah and the Lion.